Welcome to the Alabama Woodsman, a channel of satire, comedy, and entertainment, and a channel of me just calling it the way I see it. If you like what you see, be sure to hit like, maybe subscribe, and if you don't, be sure to leave a comment down below so I can take that comment and make a funny video about what you said. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to show our respect and give honor to a person who decided to make a comment about this video I made about Timothy Dixon being a false prophet. First, let me say this. I have total respect for anyone who wants to challenge what someone else says on YouTube. That, that's not sarcasm, that is complete sincerity. It takes a lot of courage to know you're going to say something in opposition that people have already said they like. Because you know you're going to get hammered. All right? So I'm not going to hammer Tammy, but I am going to point out a couple things. And I'm mainly doing this to show you what the Dixon sheep think, how they think, what they think. And you'll see why they continue to follow this man with all the evidence stacked against him that he is not a true prophet of God. So let's get into it. So here is the response to the video by Tammy Willard. You will be eating your words one day, sir. I feel sorry for you because I know that God will have vengeance against those who hurt his prophets. Timothy is a true prophet of God. Many have already come true. By the way, I was at a revival with him for the last week, and he refused to take money. This man is humble and not out for your money. Okay, so let's get into this. You will be eating your words one day, sir. I feel sorry for you because I know that God will have vengeance against those who hurt his prophets. This is a typical misuse of Psalms 105 verse 15. It seems that people are very quick to defend their false prophet using this verse that says, Touch not God's anointed. False prophets use this verse all the time. In fact, one of the telltale signs of a false prophet is they will use this verse to defend themselves. Copeland's done it, Benny Hinn's done it, and Sir Timothy Dixon has done it. Don't doubt me. They use this verse wrong, and so, to the, so do the defenders of false prophets. Timothy is a true prophet of God. Says who? The Dixon sheep? Who says Timothy is a true prophet of God? You know how you can find out who a true prophet of God is? First, read the Bible on what the prophets did. Because if you see what they did, and then the Bible calls them a true prophet, you can put, to, put the two together, and you can see what a true prophet is like. This is what a true prophet is like. Our God is 100% accurate 100% of the time. And when he speaks through a human vessel, what he speaks is 100% true and accurate 100% of the time. And if the vessel gets it wrong or it doesn't happen, the Bible says in Jeremiah that this prophet has spoken out of his heart and not what the Lord has said. Timothy Dixon does not prophesy. It doesn't come true. He preaches and he calls it prophecy. Don't doubt me on this, people. Look at my videos. Look at all the other videos other people make. There's bunches of them. Tons of videos showing this man's a false prophet. If you will look objectively at those videos, don't even look at mine if you don't want to. Look at the other guy's videos that have made uh, uh, a point that he is a false prophet. Watch those. You will not be able to deny this man does not speak for God. 
You know the old saying, even a broken clock is right twice a day? Well, that's true when it comes to false prophets because they use percentages and probability. If you say something like, a whirlwind is going to shake Washington, D.C., well, that could mean anything. That could be a tornado. That could be straight line winds. That could be a, a, a metaphor for a shakeup in some political office. That could be anything. The law of probabilities is on the side of the false prophet who uses that prophet speak. Don't doubt me, folks. I am not lying to you. I have no reason to lie to you. The fact that I am even having to address this brings shame on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We should not have to be doing this. But too many people like what he says. That's the key. The Dixon sheep like what he says. They are fulfilling the scripture that talks about the tickling of the ears. See, here's what, here's what Timothy says. He says he doesn't tickle the ears, but he does. And let me tell you how he does it. He will say, Biden, you're going to get yours for what you did in the election. Pelosi, you're going to get yours. Italy, you're going to get yours. And the Christians love it because it tickles their ears. They like what he says. Then he turns around and says, but in this hour you will know that the great visitation of the Lord has begun. There will be a great revival. You'll see healings. I'll raise the dead, which he predicted, and it didn't happen. July 4, 5, and 6 of 2021. Watch the video, people. He predicted it, and it did not happen. But see, he tickles the ears on both sides. You think, oh, no, he's prophesying to the lost. They're going to get theirs. Oh, no, 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 no. The Christians like to hear that because, yay, God's finally going to win. He tickles your ears by saying what you like. And you just totally dismiss it. Where is your discernment? Have you not read the books of the Bible that talk about this exact thing? Subject. You obviously haven't. Or if you have, for some reason, the Spirit of God has not illuminated those scriptures to you. See, the verse clearly says you will be carried away by their lies and be made unfruitful or vain. This is why you think this man is a true prophet of God. The Bible is true. It predicted you would be carried away into vanity. And you would be fruitless. You wouldn't see that he's a liar. You're wrapped up in it. Snap out of it. This man is not a true prophet of God. I'm going to need an aspirin after this. Timothy is a true prophet of God. Well, not because the Dixon sheep say he is. Many have already come true. I guess that's his prophecies. Broken clock, right? Two times a day. By the way, I was at a revival with him for the last week, and he refused to take money. So, I never claimed he was out for money. See, I know why Timothy Dixon does this. It's a pride issue. He likes being called the prophet of God. He likes getting up on that stage. He likes when other false prophets put him on a stage in Nashville, Tennessee, and say, Timothy, tell us what God is telling you in this hour. So much that he has a pathetic display where he gets down on one knee in front of God and everybody and says, thus saith the Lord, and he lies about it. That was disgustingly pathetic. Ma'am, if you've not watched the video, sir, if you've not watched the video of your true prophet, go and watch it. It was a disgrace. A showmanship. This guy's a circus clown leader. He doesn't prophesy for God. He preaches what's in his own heart. He wants those things to happen. But just because he speaks them doesn't mean God is obligated to fulfill them, which is another thing I think is going on. 
That's some of NAR teaching, New Apostolic Reformation. You Christians who hate the NAR, this man's NAR. Don't doubt me. He thinks we have apostles today. He thinks there's apostles walking the earth. That's NAR teaching. There are no apostles walking the earth. That is gone. After the church was formed and those apostles died, it's over. Only Jesus himself can appoint apostle. You don't get to call yourself. You don't have another man say, like Copeland said to one of his followers, you're an apostle. That is garbage. So he didn't take money. So what? Don't think that only false prophets ask for money. It's not true. All right? They do other things. This is a pride issue, in my opinion. I think that's what this is about. He wants to say he's a prophet of God. The prophet of God's coming to town. It's Timothy Dixon. The prophet of God is here. Timothy Dixon, will you please come to the stage? He can preach. He can sing. He is not a prophet. He is disqualified of being a prophet because his prophecies don't come true 100% of the time. That's the standard set by God, not me. But because he'll hit once or twice here and there, people will totally forget what he lied about and say, Oh my gosh, he's told the truth. He's a prophet. We're finally going to win. Trump's coming back in office before the election. Why do you believe that nonsense? Trump cannot be put back in office before the election. If Biden dies, which they're predicting in prophecy, Kamala Harris takes over. He says the Democrats are going to turn on Kamala Harris. That doesn't mean she's not going to be president if Joe dies in office. And if Kamala does get kicked out for some reason, Nancy Pelosi, third in line. Hey, folks, we have laws set up for this. Trump does not just uh, get to fly Air Force One back to Washington, D.C., and boom, I'm president again. It doesn't work that way. The whole Constitution would become a crisis. This man is humble and not out for money. Yeah, he, he looks like, like, you know, some little old grandpa that would bounce the babies on his knees on, after church on, you know, Sunday dinner and, and all that. He, he is, he, he's, he's, he's magnetic. I'll give him that. I've said that in a previous video. Can't remember if I cut that out or not. But I talked about how I like the sound of his preaching. I don't like his preaching because all he does is strings along a bunch of Bible verses together. Doesn't really preach. Just like he doesn't prophesy. He's just preaching. He's all mixed up. I don't have anything against Timothy Dixon other than he is not a prophet and needs to stop it. You are drawing shame upon our faith. You're leading people into vanity. You make it to where people won't be saved according to the scriptures and God will treat them as Sodom and Gomorrah. We know how God treated those people. Blood is on your hands, Mr. Dixon. Blood is on your hands for doing this. There is blood on your hands. You are fulfilling the scriptures. Okay, he's humble. He's not out for money. Okay, I think this is a pride thing. He, he's pride. He wants to be called. So I'll give you half on that one. I don't think he's out for money. He might be. He loves being held up on a pedestal as a prophet. Because let's be honest, people. In our faith, prophets are the rock stars of our faith. It's no longer Jesus. We go to hear the prophet. It's disgraceful. That's the way I see it. So, folks, thank you for stopping by the Alabama Woodsman. I got to go find an aspirin. I hope to see you again here soon.